strive for it. You just receive it. He says, it's my pleasure. It's already given to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I heard the apostle say something that the spirit said to me just a few days ago. And he told me to tell you here that you're coming into the days of heaven on earth. Hallelujah. The days of heaven on earth. And that's what he's been speaking to me over the past few days and stuff. And, and I'm going to kind of share on that a little bit tonight and maybe uh, over this weekend that, that you're coming into a time of the days of heaven on earth because heaven is literally invading the earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Literally invading the earth. And this is not just something that we're saying because it sounds good, but even the heavens declare it. Yeah. Even the heavens declare it. Now, I know that most of you don't know me, and so I kind of like deal with the astrological things because I realize that God speaks through everything. Yeah. Amen. And so, praise God, when Uranus back in November decided to connect with Pluto and begin to do some strange things in the heavens and stuff, I began to shout and praise God and began to declare what God was saying in the heavens because the Bible says the heavens declare, the heavens prophesy the glory of God and shows forth his handiworks. That word handiworks is what he's doing, how he's operating. And as we learn, amen, to walk in, in line with the Spirit, you're going to know what's going to happen. You're not going to be surprised by what happened, but you're going to announce what was going to happen before it happens. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when, when, when Uranus, you know, the word Uranus is the Greek word oranos, which means heaven. Yeah. Jesus said to go and preach. Mike is gone. Here it comes back. The kingdom of Uranus is at hand. <laughs> That's what Jesus told us to preach. We might need to move that a little bit because I might stumble over it. <laughs> now I'll fall down and it won't be the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he says, go and preach that the kingdom of Uranus is at hand. And then he told us, he says, you watch the signs. There'll be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and that's how you will know that something spectacular is about to happen on the earth. Because, see, nothing can happen on the earth until the heavens first declare it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. And when the heavens declare it, God raises up his apostles and prophets to agree with the heavens, and then we declare it, and we speak it forth, and it has to manifest. Because he says the Lord will do nothing except he revealed it first to his servants, the prophets. Hallelujah. And so he says, you watch the heavens, watch the signs that are in the heavens. And so now we're in a time where Uranus is doing some awesome things. Uranus was opposition to the earth, representing that heaven is literally invading the earth. You might say, well, all hell is breaking loose. What bad things are happening in the world? I'm not a part of that world. Amen. You are not a part of that world. You are in the world, but not of the world. Hallelujah. And so you live in a whole different paradigm. You have a whole, system, a whole different operating system that you operate from. And this new system, which is God's kingdom, the kingdom of Uranus, the kingdom of heaven that's at hand, that's here now, that's what you live out from. That's where you operate out from. That's what makes you different. And so as the world collapsed, as the economy collapsed, as all of the system that man has created collapsed, guess what? God's people are going to begin to rise up. God's people are going to rise up because heaven is invading earth. Literally. And it's invading your earth body to the point that your body is being changed. Metamorphosize. I'm not just waiting for a trumpet to one day sound, but the trumpet is already sounding. Can you hear it? It's sounding. The prophetic word of God that's going forth is the trumpet that is sounding, that is changing you at the molecular structure of your being. As you sit here right now, it's changing you because the word of God is living, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces and divides asunder between the soul, the spirit, and the joint and the marrow. So it's getting right down to the very DNA of your being, and it's changing you. Hallelujah. And one day soon, that which is on the inside is going to manifest on the outside. Hallelujah. And you're going to shine with his glory. You're going to shine with his glory. It's already happening now. 
Even science is verifying it, that they've discovered, amen, that there's another level of DNA on top of the DNA. All this hidden stuff that's being revealed at the, at the molecular level of your being, God is uncovering it because God is uncovering himself in you. Even science say that DNA is the book of life. It's the book of life. And guess what? You're in it. <laughs> You're in the book of life. Your name is written in the book of life. It's written within you. Hallelujah. That's the name of God that's within you. Amen. Hallelujah. The four base letters. A-G-C-T. Or Y-H-W-H. <laughs> that's God's name that's been stamped on every last one of you. And you know what? You can't do nothing about it. You might say, oh, what about the atheists? They got the name of God on them also. They can say they're atheists all they want. But God says, I've already stamped you. You're mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans eleven thirty six 36 says, for of him. And through him and to him are all things. What does that mean? Everything came out from God. Everything goes through God. And everything's going to come right back to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can't escape him. You can't escape his presence. David said, where can I go from your presence? Even if I go to hell, you're there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he will not leave my soul in hell. My God. Hallelujah. That's what he said, didn't he? Well, I, I want to just talk to you about heaven invading earth and what's happening in this time. Hallelujah. Just from a prophetic perspective, I'm prophesying already. Hallelujah. In our ministry. Let me print something here. In our ministry, we do a lot of prophetic work on the national, international level. Not even just that, but God shows us things that's happened, that's happening interstellarly, interstellarly in space and all kinds of stuff. Because, see, God is not limited. It all belongs to God, doesn't it? And if you're part of God, it belongs to you. So you're not limited. So, but I want to show you this journey that you've been on, and you may have seen it before in Scripture. I might say it a little bit different from what you've heard it before. It'll be the same thing, maybe a little bit different or whatever, but you have been on a journey yes. and you're going somewhere. We're all going somewhere and we're all going to end up right where we began. That's in God. <laughs> now, some decide to take, you know, a detour and go the long way around, run into a lot of dead ends. But eventually you're going to get there too, one way or the other. Right. Hallelujah. Now. Uh, the book of Joshua, one of the most powerful books, in my opinion, of the Old Testament, is the book of the overcomers. It is very powerful. It's very prophetic. You can read it and you can see all the way up to what is happening right now and what's going to be happening in the years ahead and what God's plans are. They're all laid out there and they're encoded and they're encrypted and different types of languages and different patterns and examples. See, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, I believe 10 and 11, it says, For all those things were done for our examples upon whom the ends of the ages are come. For our examples and admonition upon whom the ends of the ages are come, to whom be glory forever and ever. Somebody say glory. glory. And so this whole thing was about glory. <laughs> We came from glory, you go through glory, and you're going back to glory. And so he says, everything that you read about in this book, it was an example for you and I that are living today upon whom the ends of the ages are come. Now, when we say the end of the world, it's not the end of the world like the world is going to go kaboom. But it's the end of man's world. It's the end of the world that we have created so that God can begin to bring forth his world. Amen. And so so we are at the end of the world or at the end of the ages of time, the end of the time of man. We're coming into the day of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. And see, the day of the Lord, uh, that's what Jesus preached about. That's what the prophets, they all prophesied about. We call it the kingdom age. Some people call it the new age. Others call it the golden age. It's all the same thing. It's all the same period of time. They were just using different terminology to describe these, these, this very important time in history where we're coming to now. And it's laid out in the book of Joshua. The uh, people of God had come out of Egypt, and there they were on the precipice of the promised land. Now, now, uh, this whole analogy here, which this was a literal event that took place, but it was an example of something that is happening in consciousness. Somebody say in consciousness. <laughs> so there is a journey that is happening within you right now. And you came from Canaan, you came from Canaan, or, or heaven, as it were, and you were sent down to Egypt into a physical form where you had limitations. Amen. And you became a slave to your flesh. Amen. And but the ultimate goal, because God had prophesied that you were to go and you were to conquer Canaan. Amen. You were to go back there. And so we find that that Israel, they start out in Canaan, then they go down to Egypt and then they have to go back to Canaan. So you came from heaven, you came from spirit and you enter into a flesh body. And but your goal is to go back to spirit. But the ultimate goal is to take your body with you. Somebody said, take it with you. See, because you have been trained, we have been trained by religion and society that you have to die. But I come to tell you that you don't have to die. Amen. You can live. He said, I come that you might have life uh, and that you might have it more abundantly. I come to give you life. He says, I come to give you such a measure and, and power of life that you can literally take this physical body into the next realm where it cannot die. Get so filled with Jesus, so filled with the Holy Ghost, so filled with the word of God till your literal flesh will not die. It will stop aging. The whole process will begin to reverse itself and go backwards. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking about gray hair that can turn black. Hallelujah. I'm talking about sagging stuff that will begin to stand up. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, hallelujah, reversing everything, amen, where you've been like, you know, dragging a little bit, but you're walking up right, you know. <laughs> Amen. Because of God's power that's within you. Because of the anointing, the word, the life that's within you. What you say? I don't believe that. What about Moses? The Bible says, now Moses was the one that said that man's days are three score and ten. That's 70 years. But did Moses live three score and ten? No. He lived 120 years. Amen. Because he got so filled with the word of God till his natural eyes didn't go dim. Neither were his natural uh, forces abated. But he began to youth instead of age. Somebody say you think, you think, you think, you think, you think. I'm trying to change your mindset. See, because if I can change your mind, your body is going to catch up with it and your body will change also. I'm going to have to change. It's getting a little hot. See, although I live in in uh, in uh, Phoenix, I used to live in Canada, so <laughs> so I like the cold out here. <laughs> but anyway, and so Moses, a hundred and twenty years, God had to literally go and tell him, "Die, no, Moses, will you please die? <laughs> Otherwise, he would have still been living." And so I'm telling you that the ultimate goal is to take your body with you. Take your body with you. Get so filled with light that your physical body will stop dying and the aging process will reverse. Scientists know that this is true. Amen. They talk about this. The celebrities and the elite, they go through gene therapy because they realize that there are certain gene clusters within your body. All you have to do is just turn it on and all at once the whole body will begin to change. Amen. That's why they're called codons or codes on. They're codes that God has placed within your physical body. And they're waiting to be turned on. That's why the scripture says that you will be changed within a twinkling of an eye. You, a metamorphosis will take place within you because all at once, where you're operating on 24 codons now that's attached to your DNA, all at once, maybe 36, will begin to go on. 26. And you know what? Your whole physical body changes just by one little code, just by one little gene that's turned off now, becoming turned on. God is a scientist. He's omniscience. Yeah. 
This is a science book. He's omniscient. He's all science. He's all knowledge. And he's teaching us. And he's raising up a ministry in this hour to restore the prophetic sciences back to the church. This is part of what we do with HJH ministry. We are restoring the prophetic sciences, the sciences that have been relegated to the occult world, you know, because people say, astrology, ooh, that's of the devil. You know, you have to go and repent and you say so many prayers and stuff because you looked at something about the stars. That's what we were taught and stuff. But all of these sciences that are out there, they were once used by the people of God. Amen. Amen. But when the church got what they call established, organized, they kicked out the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost couldn't teach anymore and couldn't show things anymore because there was a man that had taken place of the Holy Ghost. And he dictated what we could believe and what we could do and what we couldn't do. But God is getting rid of that and he's bringing us back. Now, the book of Joshua, as I was saying, is the book of the overcomers of the Old Testament. And this book deals with the journey that's taking place within you. You are on a journey. And this journey is taking place in consciousness. You are not here to overcome some physical land over in the land of Israel or over in any other place. But the land that you are here to overcome is right here. This is your Canaan. This is your Canaan. And it means to humiliate, to bow, because there are things that's within the flesh that causes humiliation. But humiliation is okay because it brings you to a place of humbleness. That's where the word humble comes from. And sometimes we have to be humiliated before we become humble. Amen. And so that's what conquering Canaan was all about. It was about allowing God to deal with those things and bring you to a place where you're contrite, where you're humiliated, you're embarrassed, and it's okay. Hallelujah. Because you, you want to get rid of the, the ego. You want to get rid of all of the other stuff that would hinder you. Amen. And so they had to conquer Cain. Matter of fact, they had to conquer one of the cities. It was called I. We would pronounce it A-I. <laughs> and it represents the ego. I. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's where, they, that's where they got defeated at. And it wasn't a big place either. It was a very few people. And they got defeated by the I. <laughs> and your I, the ego, will defeat you every time. And they had to go back again and then overcome it. Somebody say amen. amen. This is a part of your journey. <coughs> so Joshua chapter 3, we find that they're about to embark upon something new, just as we are in the year 2014. And you might say, oh, I hear that every year. And yes, there is something new every year. But there is really something special about this year for many reasons. And we'll be talking about that possibly uh, throughout this weekend and doing the prophetic blast. We'll be doing some showing you some things that's going to be taking place this year. Specific things. God gives us uh, insight and revelation knowledge to what's going to be happening in various nations and various places around the world and signs that we watch and we follow because everything is prophetic. Somebody say that. It really is. Everything is prophetic. You know, so God, that means that God is speaking through everything that happens in the world. For example, yesterday, here's a prophecy for you. Yesterday, there was a big fire and the fire was uh, around Azusa, California, and it burned and it burned Azusa. Now, why is that important for you and I? Do you remember the Azusa Street revival? Yeah. Amen. The, when the Holy Ghost was poured out. Pentecost, I mean the real Pentecost, where people got the Holy Ghost like the real Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost got them. And I mean, they would roll people into the barn there with Charles Seymour and they jump out of the wheelchair without anybody praying for them. Legs that had been cut off grew back and arms that had been cut off grew back and all kinds of miracles took place. And there was no man that wanted the glory for it. Amen. But God was glorified and people came for over three years from all around the world to witness this. And they heard people speak in other languages. They heard, you know, uh, illiterate black people and illiterate white people speaking in Russian and Japanese and Chinese and all of these languages that they didn't even know about and stuff. And this was all documented and recorded. But yesterday, Azusa burned. It burned. Somebody say, burn, baby, burn. <laughs> <laughs> and I began to shout and praise God because you know what? I could see it. 
I could, I could see the prophetic implications there. As great as Azusa was, and we needed that. As great as Pentecost was and is in the charismatic movement, we needed that. That's not all of it. The Bible says that's only the earnest. That's only the taste of what I have for you. That's only just a little bit. That's only just to wet your lip a little bit. And so yesterday when Azusa got caught on fire and they had to evacuate 2,000 people because the news was very accurate to what happened. 2,000 people and there was 900 houses uh, damaged or so. I began to praise God because I could see the prophetic implications. So what does that mean? That God is bringing an end to Pentecost. Hallelujah. He's bringing an end to Pentecost and the charismatic movement that we've had for 2,000 years, just like the 2,000 people that had to be evacuated. And so God is saying, it's time to evacuate Pentecost. It's time to move on from Pentecost. It's time to move out of that realm. There's something greater. Hallelujah. He says the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. So what God's about to do is greater than what happened at Azusa. It's greater than what happened on the day of Pentecost. The world haven't even seen it yet. Hallelujah. We don't even have words for it. We don't even have the words for it. It's like Apostle Paul says, I, I heard things that's unlawful for any man to utter. He says, I don't even have the language for it. I can't even, I can't even frame my mouth to speak it. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Azusa is burning. The realm of Pentecost has come to an end. So what's at the Pentecost? It's a cope. It's, ta it's, it's tabernacles. See, because God demonstrated right throughout the scripture, Deuteronomy 16, 16, he says three times a year shall all your sons come before me. In other words, those are three experiences that you will have. What's the first one? Passover. That's when you pass over from death to life. You receive Christ. That's your salvation. Somebody shout 30 fold. 30 -fold. That's not 100, is it? And then some of you heard, some of you came from Baptist churches or, or Catholic or whatever, and then you heard the message of Pentecost. That, oh, that there's the power of God that he wants to fill you with. Where you will speak in other tongues, you'll be filled with joy and power. You'll cast out devils, you'll raise the dead, you'll heal the sick. And we heard that message. That's the second feast that God gave Israel. Pentecost. Somebody say 64. That's not 100, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but he said there was one more feast and that feast was reserved at the end of the biblical year and it was called the feast of Sukkot it was called tabernacles somebody say a hundredfold and that's where we're headed to. We have moved from Pentecost and we're moving to Tabernacle. So the news yesterday showed us that and it showed us that also with 2,000 people being evacuated, representing 2,000 years that we've had the Pentecostal experience from the day of Pentecost. But now we're moving on to Sukkot. Hallelujah. You've got to move on to Sukkot because God has something greater for you. It's just like when you were in a uh, 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 Passover and you heard about the message of the power of the Holy Spirit. You had to move on from that. Hallelujah. OK, I told you you're on a journey. And God has given us all of these signs. Nine hundred houses. What does nine hundred mean? I'm going to believe in numerology. OK, that's good. I believe in it, too, because it's in the word. <laughs> There's a book that's called the book of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it's about? <laughs> it's about numerology. <laughs> and God was very specific because he's restoring that prophetic science of the church, divine numerology. Yes. Yeah, yes. we can do readings with divine numerology. Yes. I can do readings. I have a book called Triboscope. I got to get it back in, in print. And I, I deal with the 12 zodiac signs assigned to the, the 12 tribes of Israel. And it's a reading, very detailed and very accurate. That book is in Africa, is in Asia, is in all over and God is blessing people with it, and people are having a paradigm shift because they're realizing that God owned the stars also. He can speak to the stars, and he set up the whole thing, and there are all of these prophetic gifts for us. Okay, now, so, where was I at? Okay, nine. <laughs> nine means finality, the end of something, the end of something, and it also means deliverance. As a woman carries a child for how many months? Okay, and so there's a, a deliverance that's about to take place in the earth. So God is bringing an end to something so that he can bring forth something different, something more. 
Are you following what I'm saying? And so I'm showing you how God uses the media. He uses events in the world to show us what he is doing. But you have to have eyes to see or an eye to see. You have to have an ear to hear in order to catch it. Okay, now, I'm still here in Joshua. They're journeying. And they're about to come upon an experience like what the Lord is saying that we're coming to today in this uh, year 2014. Now, um, it, was the, it was the new year. It was the beginning of the year when this Joshua chapter 3 took place. And you might say, how do you know? I'll show you in a few minutes here. And so here we are in the new year on the Gregorian calendar. And so God has specific things, assignments that he's doing this year for you and I. And as we become aware of those things, we can participate. We can work with God with it. Not just God is doing this, but I'm working with him. I'm a co-laborer with him, helping to create and to bring to pass his plan and purposes in the earth. Amen. So and Joshua or Yeshua, this is Jesus in the Old Testament, rose up early in the morning. This speaks of resurrection. So we're coming into a time of resurrection, rising up. The Christ in you must rise up, rising up early. I believe the scripture says, I love those that love me and they that seek me early shall find me. And so you're coming to a place where you're seeking God early, not just only in the, in the literal sense, but you, you're at the early part of a new day. You're ending the sixth day and you're in the transitional period coming into the seventh day of the Lord from the time of Adam. You're ending the second day from the time of Jesus and you're coming into the third day so the third day and the seventh day are the same do you understand what I'm saying okay and so we're talking about two Adams here the Adam and then the Adam Christ from those uh, 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 periods of time and Joshua rose early in the morning and removed from Shittim so God is re uh, telling you to get the Shittim out of your life <laughs> In the year 2014, get out of Shittim. Amen. Get away from it. It stinks. Tell the person next to you it stinks. Amen. <laughs> get it out of your life. Get away from negative people. Get away from garbage. Guard your ears. Guard your eyes. Guard what comes out of your mouth. Guard what you allow yourself to be exposed to. Get away from Shittim. Amen. And see, even the word shittim there, it means accusation and per persecution. It means anger. It speaks of all the negative emotion. It comes, it was a shittim tree, which it was a place that was filled with shittim trees or the acacia trees. But there was that little uh, hidden prophecy there because I know that God knew that English would be the dominant language in this time. And so he gave us a lot of clues here. And so he wants us to get out of that. Okay. And so he says, removed from there. And they came to Jordan. And Jordan means to descend. To die. Hallelujah. To descend. And so this is speaking of dying to the old self, dying to the ego, dying to the carnal nature, dying to the world, dying to all of that stuff. Get rid of that. This is 2014. You made some maybe uh, probably resolutions for last year that you were not able to keep or whatever. But this year, yeah. say, as for me and my house, yeah. we're going to serve God. Yeah. No matter what happens, we're going to go all the way. No matter what happened, we're going to be faithful. We're going to be committed. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. So you come to Jordan, and they lodged there before they passed over, and they were there for three days. And verse 3 says, and they commanded the people, saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest of the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and then go for it. Somebody say, go for it. So this is where we are here. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me a few days ago. He says, you're coming into a place where heaven is invading earth. But you've got to be in the right position to be affected by it. You've got to be in the right frame of mind to be affected by it. Because there will be people all around you and they don't know what's going on. They will be affected by the things of this world system. But if you know who you are. The scripture says the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. If you know who you are and you position yourself under the open heaven, I'll probably be talking about this Sunday night, the year 5774 on the Hebrew calendar, which is I in the which means I see the door open, the door in heaven that's open. So if you position yourself for that, 
you will receive all that God has for you. But you must make a conscious effort of positioning yourself, holding that frequency, staying there, not being moved left or right, in and out, every little thing that comes along. But position yourself there and stay there. Somebody say, stay there. He says, when you see it, go for it. But there's going to be a space of about 2,000 years before this really manifests. Scripture says 2,000 cubits. And so we know that from the time of Christ to the time of now, it's the 2,000 cubits that are 2,000 years. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But I want to just back up a little bit. First of all, look at verse 3. It says when. That, that, that denotes time. You must be aware of God's timing. Somebody say when. when. Now Psalms 102 verse 13 says that God has set times. He actually does have set times. Now, I believe that this meeting here is a set time. As the apostle said earlier and stuff, we tried to do this in December and it didn't really happen. And so but this is God's set time because he has a mandate. Amen. That's going to be manifesting in your life that the heavens itself have already agreed to that must come forth at this time. So it is a set time and you had to be here at this time. You might have thought, well, I'm just coming because I read about it on the Internet or the pastor or the apostle sent me something or told me to be here. But no, you had to be here. This was preordained by God before the beginning of time. God knew that you would be here. Matter of fact, you even agreed to be here. Hallelujah. You agreed to be here. Amen. the book of Job, God speaks to Job and he says, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth and when the sons of God shouted for joy? See, Job had amnesia. He had forgotten that he was there in God, just like you were also. <laughs> and so God is jogging your memory because he says when the Holy Ghost come, he will bring all things back to your what memories, the things that I said to you. Now, he wasn't just talking about what he said to you since you got saved, as it were, but the things that he said to you before you even came into this physical body. Hallelujah. There were things that he spoke to you. Things that he's spoken to your spirit and that you agreed to. And then when things got hot, we said, oh, no, God, we wanted to go the other way. And then God reminded you, but you agreed, but you agreed. I believe they used to sing a song. I made a vow to the Lord and I can't go back. And some of you tried to go back and you know what happened to you. Amen. And that vow that you made wasn't just when you came and incarnated in this flesh, but that vow you made way before the planet was even created here. You agreed that I'm going to come and I'm going to be black. I'm going to be white. I'm going to be mixed. I'm going to be Hispanic. I'm going to be whatever it takes so that my soul can learn what it needs to learn so that I can evolve back to God because I'm on a journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's all good. It's all good. And it's all God. Hallelujah. And so the experiences that you are happening, you agreed to it. Okay. Hallelujah. And so we say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. So we're talking about timing when. See, God, he exists in a realm of no time. But he projects himself through time so that he can be on time. That's why he's never late. Amen. So he exists before time, at the end of time, parallel to time, and he's always on time. That's why his name is El Olam, the God of all times. Hallelujah. The God of the ages. So he says, when? And then the next word is you. Somebody say, it must be an individual experience. You can't depend on your pastors here or the apostle here to do it for you. We can prophesy over you. We can lay hands on you. We can grease you up with so much oil you just slide out of here. <laughs> Amen. But you got to have the experience for yourself. I believe of us, the apostle or maybe pastor, if somebody was saying tonight that it's not just not, it's not enough to just know the book. But you got to know the author of the book. Amen. You must have an experience, a daily encounter with the author of the book. And that's when this book becomes a living word and you will no longer read the word, but the word will read you. Hallelujah. 
See, our problem is we want to just read and read and read and read. Just stop for a minute. Somebody say, stop, stop. stop. Allow the word to read you. Allow it to read you. Show the book to the book because you are the book. Amen. You are living epistles read of men and you've been sealed up, but the seals are being popped off the book. And you know what? When you show the book to the book, my God, hallelujah, it reads you. It reads you because the codes are already within you and they match up with the codes that's in here and you have no need that any man teach you anything because the anointing of God that's within you becomes your teacher. Hallelujah. Oh, shaha sata. Ho, ha, 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 ha. Ho, ho, ho. Somahataka. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel it reading me now. <laughs> hey, glory. So is you. It's all about you. <laughs> Somebody say it's all about me. <laughs> it's your personal experience. It's all about you. Oh, God, Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus. <laughs> when you, then the next word is see. <laughs> you got to have insight. People ask me, what does it mean on your website? I see, E-Y-E-C. It means just what it says, I see. <laughs> My third eye has been open, <laughs> so I see. <laughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Somebody say, see. <laughs> he says, when you see, you got to get to the point where you see it. You got to see it. Amen. Where you get to this book, or you get into your prayer closet, or you get into meditation, and all at once, something happens to you. You zone out. You go into another world. Nothing of this world matters anymore. The cars, the houses, the women, the men, the what, even children or whatever. <laughs> Nothing matters but God. Nothing better but that experience. Because, see, nothing can compare. Yeah. Nothing can compare to this. Because this is you. Yeah. This is you. Hallelujah. The very essence of the almighty God. Hallelujah. So when you, when you, you have the person. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. You got to have the personal experience and you have to see it for yourself. And you can't just be told about it. I believe it was Job says that I have heard of you with the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes see you. <laughs> and you know what? We're all going to have that experience because the scripture says every eye shall see him every eye shall see him and so god is busy working working on your third eye amen because that's the only eye that you can really see him with amen what do you what do you mean the third eye somebody point to your head right here somebody say open sesame, open sesame. <laughs> that's your pineal gland amen <laughs> from the angels of time people knew that we lost that because the religious people that wanted to control us told us it was a cultic. Amen. That's why you see it in Egypt, you see it in India, you see it in all the ancient cultures and stuff. Matter of fact, it's right in your head. Part of your brain is shaped just like that eye of Horus right inside your head. It is there. You can't get away from it. And your pineal gland there has 200 retina cells in it. So it's literally an eye in the center of your head, just as the Hindus were that dot right there. Because they knew it. There's 200 retina cells there. It is a backwards eye that is in your head. And when that eye becomes open, you see. Ha, ho, basata. Hallelujah. They can put your eyes out, but you will still see. Hallelujah. 
That's why in the ancient Greek culture and stuff, the prophets, you find it even you look at ancient mythology or you look at the myth mythical, mythological mov movies and stuff, the oracles, they were blind. And some of them literally blinded themselves because they did not want to see anything of the world because they only wanted they, their eye had been opened and they only wanted to see God. They didn't want to be distracted, so they would literally blind themselves. At, the, at every courthouse you go to, you will see a woman. She's blind. Wow. Justice. Yes. Lady Justice is supposed to be blind. Where does it come from? Greek mythology. It really wasn't mythology. It was actually history that they told us was mythology. And they wanted to tell us that it wasn't real. It was really real. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to go blind yourself, but what I'm telling you that you have to set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. So that this eye will become open and you will see. So he says, when you see the ark of the covenant, what does that mean? That's the glory of God. That's the glory of God. Oh, my God. That was powerful. Now, I want to tell you something a lot of people don't know. That before the Israelites built the Ark of the Covenant, the Egyptians already had the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> they walked around in Africa with the Ark. You can see the ancient Egyptian artwork. They, uh, they walked around because they had communication with God. So the Ark of the Covenant, yes, it was something supernatural, but we're learning to redefine the word supernatural. Somebody say high technology. <laughs> so this Ark of the Covenant was actually... Uh, some technology that you could communicate with deities or beings from off world. That's why only on certain days it became activated based on the movements of the heavens. The seventh day and the tenth month, sun had to be in Libra. <laughs> It was called the Day of Atonement, the only day that the high priest could go in and communicate. And this Ark of the Covenant began to hum and began to vibrate. And a holographic image came forth and something happened between the cherubims that looked like the eye of God. That was like a TV screen where they could see stuff happening off world. OK, you guys not ready to go there, are you? <laughs> Hey, man, the Ark of the Covenant. Somebody say Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> this ain't the Indiana Jones version of it either. <laughs> That's why it was so coveted by the nations. The cherubim, one on the left side and one on the right side. Because it was an image of something that's within you. A communication device technology that's within you. The cherubim on the right hand, the cherubim on the left hand, and what was in the middle? Somebody said the Shekinah glory cloud. <laughs> That's, oh, yes, it was. <laughs> and inside that cloud was an eye. <laughs> Somebody put your hands on your head. <laughs> Somebody said left and right brain. Left and right brain. Hemisphere. Hemisphere. Left cherubim, right cherubim. Now, what's right in the middle of those two cherubims? The eye, the pineal gland. <laughs> Jesus said, if your eye, not eyes, if your eye be single, your whole body will be filled with light. So he says that when this thing becomes fully activated, you will become a light being. You will take your body with you. Hallelujah. And your body will not be limited to this three-dimensional world, but you'll go into a uh, fourth-dimensional world, astral travel. I know people say, oh, there's the devil, whatever like that. Okay, it's all right. But <laughs> you can go into the fifth dimension. You can, matter of fact, go interstellar, traveling, traveling with your physical body because this becomes your spaceship. Now, back to the Ark of the Covenant. He says, when you see the Ark, when you see it, when you understand this thing and what it's all about, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, when you understand what is actually happening within you, because remember God told Moses in e Exodus chapter 24, you make sure that you make it according to the pattern that's shown to you in the mountain. Yes. And then later on, he says, don't you know that you're the temple? So the pattern was man. So the pattern was man. Yes. And so the Ark was made after the pattern of man. So right up here, you have your, your Ark of the Covenant here. You have your left and right brain hemisphere that is not synchronized 
Your left brain wants to analyze and criticize and disbelieve everything, whereas your right brain wants to prophesy and want to believe in the supernatural and do all of this other stuff. So there's the battle between the left and the right brain's hemisphere, but eventually the left and the right brain is going to come into synchronicity. On, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when that happens, there's a manifestation of God. He says the glory cloud comes in. Hallelujah. Okay, now, that's just a little, a, a little um, information there. You can think about it. You don't have to just try to just grasp it all. I believe someone said also tonight, a lot of the stuff that you hear, don't try to get it intellectually. It's in your spirit. It's in your spirit. And God will raise up somebody later. Are you going to be reading or studying? And all at once is going to be, oh, wow, I see that. You know, wow, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. Because it is there. It is all there. And so it was a communication device to communicate with Elohim, God's. Hallelujah. You are that. Why did they carry it on their shoulder? What's on your shoulder? Your head? <laughs> With the two cherubims? Amen. We won't get into all of the other parts of it here. But he says, when you see it, when you understand the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, and yes, it was a place of blessing. Yes, it was a place of glory. Yes, it was a place of power. Yes, it was a place where if your enemies came out against you, they were destroyed. Hallelujah. Amen. When you see the, the Levites, the priests bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go for it. Somebody say, go for it. Go for it. So we're seeing the ark. We're seeing the ark. And in the year 2014, it's going to be revealed as never before because God said that he's going to just uncover things. He's no longer just peeling the covers off, but he says that he's going to rip the covers off. Everything that's been hidden, everything that's been covered up is being revealed. It's, Jesus said that it had to happen. And just as it, is, as it is happening in the outer dimension of the world, it is happening within you. It is happening within you because you are the greatest mystery, man, made in the image of God. And everything that would hinder that mystery from manifesting and coming forth, it must be ripped off. Yes. Hallelujah. This is your purpose. You were made. You were created in the image and likeness of God to bear the image of the heavenlies, not the image of the earth. For 6,000 years, we bore the image of the earthly, of the first, our father, Adam. But now we're coming to bear the image of the heavenly, our father, the second Adam, our elder brother, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Because that's who you really are. That's the agreement that you had before you came incarnated into this physical body that you now live in now. Although you have had several versions of yourself and you yet do have several versions of yourself existing in various dimensions at the same time. And this is why you have dreams and you see yourself doing things in different places and stuff. And you know that it is real and stuff because it is real. Those are versions of you that are existing right now on different planes hallelujah right now but you know what every version of you must be reconciled must be brought into harmony must be merged into one and that's what's gonna make you the power for being that you already are hallelujah everything being brought into one he told us to preach the ministry of reconciliation oh hasamba kokasai hey ha ya ya ha ha we have been broken and fragmented. Even in this dimension here, lives, our lives have been broken and shattered and fragmented in different areas by different things that have happened in our lives and emotional stuff and relationships and trauma and different things that has happened. Now all of those fragments must come together, must come together as one because it's just like the house of Israel. The house of Israel had to become one. It was all divided and separated. You remember the time of Saul? Amen. He led them astray and it became fragmented. And then there was David that began to rise up, but he was in the lower. He was in the lower realm. He was in, in Judah and Saul, the house of Saul was reigning up over Israel. But then Saul had to die. Die. Now, when was Saul anointed as king? At Pentecost. How many times was David anointed? Three times. Three times. It represented Passover, Pentecost and fullness. Because you, Jesus, the son of David, would come forth in the full anointing, the full expression. And that's where you are coming to now. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? So the house of Saul warred against the house of David. It's just like the religious people. They will war against you. I don't believe them. They're, they're, they're off on the deep end out there. They believe in all kinds. You know, they were talking about stars and stuff. And they had this guy there, you know. <laughs> 
we got to pray for apostle. Uh, we got to pray for pastor over there. We got to pray for them. We got to call a prayer meeting and stuff <laughs> and to see for them. But I don't know what they're getting off into. <laughs> Somebody said deeper in the word. (laughs) So the house of Saul would war against the house of David. But the scripture says the house of Saul got weaker and weaker. And the house of David got stronger and stronger. In the house of David, David ruled over Judah. Praise, praise, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. People that know how to worship and praise God. And the house of David got stronger and stronger and stronger. And finally it overcame the house of Saul and it reconciled and brought that fragmented land together. That's what happens through your praise and worship. (laughs) That's why it's so important for you to engage God in praise and worship and just get whacked out of your mind, roll on the floor, crawl up the walls, swing from the chandelier, do whatever it takes because you're getting healed emotionally. You're getting healed in your genetics. You're getting healed at deeper levels that you could never even imagine. All of those fragmented parts of you are coming together. All the versions of you are coming together. Oh, God. Oh, I didn't know it was that important. Why do you think God put it in the Bible? (laughs) Hallelujah. Because it is important. Because when you begin to get stirred up. (laughs) Clapping your hands and stomping your feet and moving around and crying and laughing. Your body starts to respond to it. There are endorphins that are released in your brain these chemicals and it caused healing to take place in your body it caused the arthritis to begin to go out the high blood pressure the the heart problem and whatever problem may be the the healing properties that god has placed within you become activated but if you sit there like a stone i don't know what's going on i don't know what they're doing i've been (laughs) it might just pass right over you healing deliverance taking place all around Amen. But it's not touching you. Remember, you have to position yourself when you see the ark. Then you go for it. And he says there was going to be a space of 2,000 cubits, which was a type and shadow pointing prophetically of a period of 2,000 years before people actually move into the fullness of this. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the the first church, the uh, early church at Pentecost, that was great. That was wonderful. The church down through the ages, the Azusa Street moving, the, the uh, movement, the uh, uh, other reformations and revivals that took place, 1500s, the 1700s with the Wesleys, all of that was great. All of that was good. But it was not what God is about to do now. Right. Amen. The stuff that you see out there in the world of religion, thank God for the good that they do do, but a lot of it is just do-do. But... <laughs> <laughs> And I believe he told us to remove from shit to him. Amen. <laughs> get out of it. Get out of it. Get out of it. Get out of it. You can't, you can't see the ark if you're covered in it. <laughs> okay. All right. So somebody shout unclean. <laughs> okay. I'm almost finished. I, I don't know when I'm supposed to sit down or let me know I, I, because I'm, I'm going to soon sit down. <laughs> So, <laughs> so he says there's a space of 2,000 years or 2,000 cubits. You won't be able to come near it, but you're going to walk a way that you haven't walked before. Yeah. 2004. <laughs> the king doing Pentecost, doing the wheat harvest. And the scripture says he was anointed with a vial of oil, a limited portion. But David was anointed with the horn. <laughs> a way that you have not walked before. You're going to come into a whole new experience in him. And things are going to begin to happen so fast. If you're not watchful, it'll pass right by you. You'll miss it. You'll miss it. You'll miss it. And so the Lord will say to you, be watchful. Be watchful. Be alert. Be aware. Because the things that he's going to be doing is going to be so powerful. Some of you will find yourself transitioning into different careers and into different positions. And it's going to happen so fast. 
Some of you will get phone calls and you will have to just make a phone. You will have to make a quick decision to just step right into it. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm prophesying. Amen. Because that's what the Lord is saying. And so he says that you're going to have to be aware. You're going to have to be ready because things are going to be happening very fast, very fast. And he says, don't miss out on your opportunities. Don't miss out on the opportunity and don't be afraid to step into it. Don't be afraid to go forth. Don't be afraid to leave the old and to step into something new. And some of you, there's going to be relationships that God is going to be ending, bringing to, uh, uh, in, uh, 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 faith, that phase to an end. And you're going to have to move on. Hallelujah. Because you can't carry the dead weight. You can't carry the dead weight. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, just let the dead bury the dead. He says, let the dead bury the dead. Let it just, let it just, let it just, let it just, you know, and then maybe it will catch up later, but don't be consumed by it. Don't allow your mind and your spirit to be so worried about these people. Amen. That's a part of your life and that you thought should be a part of you and that you thought that should be where they, where you think they should be. And they're just not there yet. So allow them to be there. Allow them to be where they are. Allow them to be where they are. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, move on. And as you move on and stuff, he says that they're supposed to be a part of it. They will catch up. And he says that I will redeem the time and they'll be where they're supposed to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. And so he says, but now is the time to just move forth. And there's going to be major, major, major upheavals and transitions. And I hear the Lord saying, amen, don't see the upheavals as something negative. Something that is something good. It's something good. It's something positive that's going to be happening. And I see that some of you here, there's a few of you, probably two or three of you, that's going to be moving even like, you know, in this year and stuff, you know. And uh, it's just going to just happen. But it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And I hear the Lord saying, just let go, let go, let go. Because he's bringing you into something better. Bringing you into something better. Hallelujah. Something better. Something better. And you don't have to know everything about it right now. You don't have to try to figure it out, but just move, move. He says, you're going to walk a way that you have not walked before because you're coming into something new, something new. He says, I make all things new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so just yield to the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of you are going to be thrust into ministry and to new er Oh, Shamba Hakasa. Ho, Sakaya. New areas of ministry and just. But just allow God to do it because he would bring an end to some things just to bring to bring something else fresh, something else new. Hallelujah. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be powerful, 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 powerful. Hallelujah. And the Lord says also, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't allow things to bring fear to your mind. Just rest in him. Rest and know that he's doing it for you. And he will continue to work on your behalf. He says, I know the thoughts I have to you. They're good and not evil. It's to give you hope and a future. Hope and a future. Hallelujah. And it's beyond, 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 beyond what you could do for yourself. It's beyond what you have seen in the past and experienced. Some of you that's been waiting and praying for someone, God, bring someone to walk alongside me. And God says this year, some of you are going to begin to see that. Hallelujah. You're going to see that happen. Amen. I hear the Lord saying this won't be this won't be a project either that you have to work on. Hallelujah. <laughs> because some of you have been, you know, some of you got hooked up to projects and you thought it was God. Amen. <laughs> Some of you got hooked up to projects and you thought it was God. Oh, but I know this is God. I had a dream about it and stuff. And it turned out it wasn't really God. And so, and, uh, but the Lord says that, that uh, if you wait upon him and you just seek him, he's going to bring forth people. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. That won't be projects. Amen. <laughs> they walk right alongside you. Ha, ya, ya. In step, in step, in step, in step. In step, in step. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You haven't passed this way before. Mm. Mm. I just see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. The presence of God. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Praise God and 
this couple here with the purple on. Hallelujah. 